Welcome back to the Unbox Broadcast. Today, Dr. Davis and I will talk about how leaders can create a positive workplace culture. We're ready to dive in. We're excited you're here. So stick around as we help you unbox the power and potential of your leadership. I'm Dr. Robert Davis, family life educator and leadership coach. This is my co-host, R.P. Soriano. Soriano attended John Hopkins Carey Business School, worked in the financial industry, and was an international consultant before partnering with me to launch Unbox the Lead. Me? Well, I worked for over 20 years as a senior pastor and a community organizer. Then I retired and started a leader's peer support community called Unbox the Lead. Soriano and I have been friends since the early 90s, and with our varied experiences and expertise, we help leaders reach the next level in their leadership. So join us for the next few moments as we unbox the power and the potential of your relationships, your leadership, and your life. Welcome back, everyone, wherever in the world you may be. I'm R.P. Soriano, and with me once again is Dr. Robert Davis, family life expert and leadership expert. How are you this week, my friend? Man, I'm doing wonderful. So good. Uh, as as um, Nat King Cole would say, here comes those lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer. Oh, man, now that song's going to be in my head all mm. day long. Thank you very much for that earwig. Uh, <laughs> I, that's the song that probably nobody knows but you and I are big Nat King Cole fans, and that song is just now drilled in. Uh, I'm excited about our topic today. We're going to talk a little bit about how leaders can create a positive workplace culture, which I think is an extremely important subject nowadays. Uh, and it's something that is becoming more and more discussed and talked about, the importance of uh, having a positive workplace culture. So, Let's let's dive into the let's dive into the topic and let's look at a couple of things here. I think we should uh, I think we're going to first start with defining what a positive workplace culture is. And then we'll talk about the leader's responsibility in creating a workplace culture. So let's start with defining what that means. I think for a lot of people, uh, it may seem obvious or you may think that there is one true definition of what it means to, of what a work positive workplace culture may be. But as we know, everyone has a different idea of what we all tend to think is a universal concept. So I think for me, a positive workplace culture means that everyone basically agrees with everything that I say. Uh, they follow my orders. They do exactly what I need them to do when uh, I need them to do it. And basically, it's a f completely stress-free environment <laughs> for me. Uh, whatever happens, whatever happens on the other end of that is really on them. Uh, so, but but I'm I'm imagining that that is not necessarily a good working definition of uh, a positive workplace culture. So, why don't you start us out with giving us at least a working definition that we can uh, build this build this show on? Yeah, and a lot of what we're going to talk about, or at least part of what I'm going to talk about today is around how uh, leaders uh, can end up uh, falling into the manipulation trap. And let me show you how that's done. Uh, we want to ask all of our viewers, please make sure that you like, subscribe and share. That's our manipulation trap. Make sure that you like, subscribe and share. Um, one of the things, uh, Raphael, that, um, that we've shared many times over is that uh, a lot of these leadership trainings uh, develop tactics and strategies, but what they really are is they give you, uh, again, tactics and strategies that are designed to manipulate your team. So even when you hear about how to create a positive workplace culture, how to have uh, happier workers and stuff, it's about the little things that you do and the focus. The focus is really not uh, on how the leader is showing up and how the leader is uh, conducting themselves and how they're managing themselves in relationships and managing themselves as a leader, but more how you can kind of how you can kind of, uh, you know, move the levers on the on the team members to get them. And I'm not again, I'm not trying to say that leaders should not be very thoughtful about uh, what their team needs 
and, and how that impacts them, you know, uh, especially like a relative to work and home life balance and things of that nature. But what I'm saying is that when you say, OK, I'm going to set up these, I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six kind of things. And this is this is, you know, this is going to cause them to be happy. I, I ran across something and then I'll get into the specifics, but I ran mm -hmm. across a, a quote comes from the book, The Anxious Leader, and it says the true measure of morale is whether employees are purposeful, present and engaged. I just thought that was very powerful. Mm -hmm. Whether they also like each other and feel happy is really none of your business. And I think we put a lot of our mental energy too often as leaders as as wanting our team members to like each other and to to being happy. And what I hope today we get from uh, our conversation is that there's a better way uh, to develop a stronger, positive workplace culture that will ultimately build up morale. So let's talk about what is a positive workplace culture. But I want to I want to I want to flip it back and I want you to think, Raphael, what has been uh, outside of working with me? And we know that that's the uh, that's the pinnacle. That's that's the uh, that's the ultimate example. Mm -hmm. But outside of working with me, I want you to kind of think about a workplace that you really enjoyed working. Uh, has that existed for you? A place that you really enjoyed working, that you really uh, you really love the environment and all those different things. And I, I want you to kind of just take a second or two and tell us about what that what, what that was like. And then I'm going to go into uh, the definition of a healthy workplace culture. But I'm interested in just hearing that for a second. OK, so <laughs> it's so interesting about the way that you describe th that quote, because because the, the work. The situation that I'm thinking about captures that perfectly. And that is, I had a very great workplace environment, but I didn't always like the people that I worked with and vice versa. That I, I, wasn't, I wasn't the most popular, very liked person as well. But the nature of the job involved so much on the fly thinking and creativity and problem solving and a lot of challenges that there was a lot of there was a lot of opportunity to build mastery there was a lot of opportunity to uh, you know to there was a lot of cat and mouse there was a lot of there was just a lot of thinking going on and there was mm -hmm. a lot of uh, opportunity to uh, uh, to just be creative and so that was a great workplace environment is something but the nature of the work kind of brought that had that whole element to it so, yes. And so that was very rewarding, but there were times when there was, there was a lot of conflict and especially the nature of this job was you didn't always work with the same people all the time. Mm -hmm. So you would be, you would be working with different people and you may not only be working with them for a very limited amount of time. So you didn't really have a chance to build a lot of camarader camaraderie or build a lot of, uh, uh, have a time to kind of get to know that person, uh, but you could know, <laughs> you would also know relatively quickly if you didn't like them or not. Uh, but you did the job. So, so yes, I can think of a time when, when the environment was very good in that sense. I was very satisfied, content, and happy with the work. But, you know, whether or not I liked anybody, and believe me, my supervisor really wasn't, didn't care much about that issue. Uh, that wasn't their concern at all. It was a matter of whether the work could get done and, uh, you know, yeah. Well, and, and, and I, I'm, 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 a, you know, I'm very, uh, I'm, I'm very excited to hear you say that because uh, a, an environment where people are forced to think, when people are actually forced to think, really does help to create a more positive workplace. So let, let me talk about some of the elements of a positive workplace culture. And, and number one, uh, it is that the team understands and believes in the mission and vision. And I, I call that being purposeful. Uh, and I, you can tell I, I borrowed that from the, uh, the other offer, uh, from, the, uh, from, the, from the author, which is, uh, you know, being purposeful. But uh, when the team understands and believes in the mission and vision, and so it's, 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 it's really important for a leader uh, to, you know, be intentional about vision casting which means that the leader shares, this is why we're doing what we're doing because this is where we're trying to go. And when team members can say, hey man, okay, I get it. This is where we're trying to go. I'm not just doing it for the sake of doing it, but this is where I'm, I'm this, this, is where, this is where it plays into the bigger picture. You know, whatever it may be, whether it's in the financial sector, 
whether it is, uh, you know, an auto mechanic or whatever it may be. You know, listen, people rely on their cars, man. And we want to make people happy by doing a good job repairing their cars correctly at a very reasonable price. Uh, man, that helps to bolster people's lives. And it is not just about it's not just about changing brakes or oil or or, or or repairing transmissions. It's about impacting people's lives. You see how that now cast a vision over something that was uh, that we may have uh, originally considered to just be, you know, oh, man, it's just a mechanical job. You, you know, you, you change out this, you, you replace that or whatever it may be. No, we're impacting people's lives. And our larger goal is and this is what a leader does from time to time. The leader helps. The, the team to see this is what we do because this is what we're trying to accomplish. So mm -hmm. this is what we do is our mission. This is where we're trying to go. What we're trying to accomplish is the vision and teams. This is a positive workplace culture. When teams understand and believe in the mission and vision that helps automatically to create a positive workplace culture. Uh, the second thing uh, that uh, helps to create a positive workplace culture. And by the way, Raphael, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in hearing your thinking on on these uh, topics as well. You know me, I'll just go right through. All yeah, and I, I don't have any pausing. thinking on that, but I did have a question on that. And that was that was and I guess just how where where do where are the gaps here? I mean, obviously, the first thing is to make sure that you're vision casting. Because if you just as you've articulated, if you're not doing that, then no one knows. No one knows the vision. No one knows the purpose. They're just kind of mindlessly going through or, or not purposefully going through their duties. But this isn't just a one time conversation. Correct. I mean, is this like the does the leader feel that, OK, I've already made this clear to everyone. I, I can drop it. I don't need to mention this again or or. How do you how do you continue to reinforce this without it becoming kind of a lecturing thing to where people start to the eye roll thing? Like, here we go again with this leader coming up and telling us, you know, reinforcing again, you know, our purpose and our vision. Yeah, it, it doesn't turn into an eye roll thing. You just reinforce it. But you reinforce it also uh, situationally. You reinforce it situationally. So let's say, for instance, and I, and, I'm, and I know this, I know some people are going to, you know, kind of push back or, or rather recall from me using the example again of a mechanic shop. But I think that it's important to see how it applies. Uh, I think we think about it oftentimes in the executive world, but I want to show how it even applies in a mechanic shop. So in a mechanic shop, a guy is working on a lady's brakes. It's not working, you know, the, the, whatever's happening or she brings the car back and she's complaining that the brakes are still squeaking uh, and whatnot as I'm driving. And the guy's a little frustrated because, he, you know, he drives it around, uh, doesn't hear the squeaking. He thinks that the lady's out of her mind. And here's where the leader's opportunity comes in. Hey, listen, I know that this is a difficult situation um, and I know that she, uh, this dear sister uh, tends to be a difficult uh, 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 customer of ours. But remember, one of the things that we really want to do here is to help people to be happy. People who have a safe, dependable, reliable car are just generally happier people. And that's where we're, we're in the business of helping to make people happy. So if, if we could just go a little extra mile for this for this lady, I think it will really bolster our reputation and it'll just it'll help her life to be a lot more comfortable. You know, there again, you're sharing the vision, but you're sharing it within a situational uh, context. So it's not just about standing up. Hey, team, gather around. Uh, it's Monday. And I want to remind y'all we're here to make people's lives better, to make people happy. All right. Get to work, everyone. But no, right. you, you know, it, that that is necessary. And when you have, you know, the workers, uh, the, uh, the workers meetings and, and, and all those different things and the conference calls. Yes, that's that's necessary. But in the situational context as well, it really does uh, uh, play in and build up, you know, talking about purposeful. I never forget. When um, and, and people who may not know, uh, Raphael mm -hmm. develops the language around uh, what we do. He doesn't develop a lot of the, the marketing language or the overwhelming majority of the marketing language for Unbox to Lead is developed by Raphael. And one of the things that 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 I am very excited about is when you develop that language around why we provide uh, scholarships and discounted rates for our BIPOC customers. And you were uh, uh, articulating how these are services 
that are often not available are often out of reach, especially for executive directors of nonprofits because of the cost constraints that are associated with them. And that we have developed a way to provide these high level services for people who, um, you know, may not have the financial resources to, 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 it wasn't just that, you know, we had this, but to hear you articulate it did my heart so well because it meant now that uh, not only did you uh, understand it, but that you also believed it. And when we're in meetings with philanthropic organizations and we're you know seeking to partner with various uh, uh, organizations throughout the state, and throughout the country, you know, hearing you talk about that says this person gets it. And that in and of itself is a sign of a positive workplace culture mm -hmm. when the team members can say, I know what I'm doing and I know why we're doing it. I know the impact that it's that it's that it's making, even if it's making burgers. You know, a lot of people are in a rush and they just want a good quality meal that's made right. And 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 that's what you're giving them. That's the joy that you're bringing into their life. And when people can can repeat that back, man, there's a there's a huge difference between the kind of service that you get from some places and the kind of service that you get from Chick-fil-A. And it has to be more than just Chick-fil-A, you know, uh, drilling it into people. The pay is the same. Everything is the same as other fast food restaurants, but they just do customer service so much better. And I always reference them. And I think part of that is because they're very clear about what their uh, mission and vision is as a yeah, I, to the chicken sandwiches. And I think, I mean, not to equate necessarily positivity with happiness per se, uh, but when people do, when people know why they are there and what they are contributing and understanding where they are going and they have that, they, they kind of have that guidance and they, they really know why, you know, what's, what's the, what's the method to the madness. Yeah. Uh, it does. It just, it does, it does do wonders. I can think about, I can think about many times in my own career and I can think about other colleagues that I've had when you're just kind of, you know, floating out at sea, you have no idea why anybody is doing, why you're there, what are you doing? Because I, th I don't think most, most people don't want to just show up. Most people do not just want to show up. Com contrary to what a lot of people may imply, most people don't want to just go to work and do nothing. They really want to go to work and they want to have an impact. They want to understand why they're doing what they're doing. And they want to, they, they personally want to be able to end the day and say, I know exactly why why I work today and what my what my purpose was yeah. and what the vision was and my part in playing in that. That 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 is that is critical and important. So I think why don't we leave it there and pick this up in our next conversation. We're going to we're going to continue this conversation in our next uh, broadcast uh, and uh, get back to the to the uh, to the to the other points. So uh, we'll leave it there. And uh, we'll see everyone back in our next uh, in our next episode. Unbox provides a full service leaders peer support community that helps high level leaders become more authentic leaders who build healthy workplace cultures and reach their personal life goals. To learn more and discover how we can take your leadership and your life to the next level, please visit our website at unboxtolead.com. That's unboxed, the number two, lead.com. Again, that's unboxed, the number two, 